Alrighty guys, we're back for Demir Assassins, and this is a Murders at Karlov Manor, Standard Brew, and I'm Red Cat. Let's briefly go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked, but first things first, this was a suggestion down in the comments, so thank you so much for the suggestion, it's gonna be a fun one, it was essentially to revisit Assassins, so that's what we're gonna do here today, we got four Aven Heartstabbers, two mana one one bird assassin, Rock and flying. Now, when it dies, you mill two cards and draw a card. Okay, that's not bad. But then also, as long as there are five or more mana values among cards in your graveyard, it also gets plus two, plus two, and has death touch, which I actually think is going to be pretty easy to get to in this build. More assassins. We got a couple Atrada, Deadly Fugitive. Three mana, one, four rock in that death touch. It is a legendary creature, and whenever an assassin you control deals combat damage to an opponent, you cloak the top card of that player's library, so you get a two, two creature with ward two. Not half bad, man. Eventually, you can flip it face up for two, a blue, and a black using Atrada's top ability as well. Uh, but we're not going to worry too much about that. I don't know how often you're actually going to be flipping those creatures face up, honestly. So, More assassins. We got a couple. Massacre Girl, Known Killer, 4 mana, 4-4, four, four, Rock, and Menace. And creatures you control have Wither, so they deal damage in the form of minus one, minus one counters, which is pretty wild, actually. And then whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, if its toughness was less than one, you draw a card. So hopefully just a way for us to restock our hand quite effectively, especially if we're using removal in here like Virtue of Persistence, for example, which we could totally drop here in the two mana spot because of that adventure side. Minus three, minus three, and then gaining two life happens to be really good. So all four of these, I think, are going to be necessary, actually. The greatest of all the assassins, Roaming Throne. You're going to call assassin on it, of course. And then if a triggered ability of another creature you control of the chosen type triggers, it triggers an additional time. So that's going to work with all of our assassins. It works with the death trigger on Heartstabber, the bottom ability on Atrada. Of course, it works with that bottom ability on Massacre Girl. But then we got the big bad assassin, Vein Ripper. All four of them, dude. And I think it's going to be worth having all four of them here on the top end. Six mana, Vampire Assassin, six five, Flying, Ward, Sacrifice a creature. That is a disgusting ward cost, dude. Whenever a creature dies, target opponent loses two life and you gain two life as well. If you have roaming throne on the board, all of that happens twice. And I'm pretty sure the ward ability happens twice too, because the ward should be a triggered ability. That's nasty, dude. Okay, we have a whole bunch of other removal packed in. From March of the Wretched Sorrow to Black Sun's Twilight, we have Bitter Triumph. Uh, some board wipes like Malicious Eclipse, a couple of those. We also have Deadly Cover up here. Other creatures that we don't mind just having. I chose Aklazotes mainly for its lifelink, but also like when it dies, it could help you ramp into like the Bane Ripper if you're not seeing the mana, which we should be seeing the mana because we have 28 total. Also a little bit of ramp on Celestis as well. Okay, guys, we're going to save the more in-depth discussion for the end of the video after we get some games in and then potentially make some changes to the list there talk more about synergies all that fun stuff look forward to that no honorable mentions today so let's go ahead hop into some ranked and see how we do All right, guys, we'll see if we can get right into that first match here. In the meantime, what am I expecting from the build? Got to be 100% with you. I think it's going to be good. I played about maybe four test games or so, and it did pretty decent overall. Like, uh, everything felt like it was working well. Uh, one of the funny things that happened in my test games... Ooh, opponent goes first here. This might be slow. Ah, uh, let's keep it. Let's give it a shot, huh? The March of the Wretched Sorrow gaining us some life... One of the funny things in the test matches is, is originally I played March of the Wretched Sorrow in here um, for... So we're going to start with Swamp. Because I thought it was a minus X minus X ability that would work with Massacre Girl. But it actually is just damage. But I kept it in because it's actually just like a criminally underplayed removal spell in my opinion. Like that extra life gain that comes from March of the Wretched Sorrow is absolutely ridiculous, dude. Uh, let's see, let's see. So we could go one, we could go, we could pop that before the swing, get rid of Malicious Eclipse. Malicious Eclipse is probably going to be really good though, huh? But let's go one march into the other. So X is two. 
and hopefully not regret getting rid of the second march here. So it's two cards for two of their cards because the Ancestral Anger fizzles out so they don't get the uh, card draw. Second Massacre Girl, okay. I'm not going to get Soaring City down just yet because we might still need that as utility depending on what mana we see off the top. With 28 mana, we should be able to see it pretty easily. Okay, Swiss Spear. So Malicious Eclipse doesn't have the double black just yet. So we definitely need to see something here. Oh, Vein Ripper. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, everything's very expensive in hand, guys. Luckily, Field of Ruin hits the Foundry. We should do it now, right? We should totally do it now. Well, they might they might spend mana to power that up, but then they'll have an untapped mountain is the problem. Okay, I'll do it on their turn. That's a that's actually a tough decision. What would you guys do there? Would you do it now so that way they won't get like a free untapped mountain on their turn? Or Yeah, if that if that wasn't Mistress Foundry, we'd kind of be in trouble. Like not being able to find the black source on the field. Also, we're thinning the deck, so hopefully we still Okay, they go for the swing gonna be a play with fire unfortunately not powering up the foundry so saving the field of ruin back isn't the greatest but they also don't know what's in hand too so they could be playing around other forms of spot removal and stuff like that okay is now the time since they have the two open anyways yeah probably because if well Man, that's tough. That's really tough decisions. Okay, yeah, because on the stack of the Field of Ruin, they still could have played a two-mana thing. Plays in Crescendo, Lightning Strike, anything like that, right? We grab the other Swamp, and they still have two mana open. So we got a little lucky there that they weren't just spamming stuff out of their hand. <gasps> oh, no, guys. Okay, well, we dropped the Malicious Eclipse, hopefully keeping us in this for a little bit of time. Is it going to be protection for that Swift Spear for the turn? With 28 mana, we technically saw... Well, since we, we only saw three... And then we thinned the deck once. So Swift Spear is, in fact, alive. Are we dead this turn? No, I don't think so. But are we dead next turn? Yes, I think we missed... I think we missed that land drop at a terrible time so we'll see we'll see they go ahead and draw off the scoundrel yeah like i said i don't think we're dead this turn it's it's next turn that we have to be concerned about wow wow uh mono red popping off for this for this game however we were successful at slowing them down we saw that mana easy peasy it was all too easy with 28 lands, guys. Massacre Girl is pretty good. If it ends up being like a Witch Stalker Frenzy off the top, Massacre Girl dies really easy. Um, So Roaming Thrones Ward, they swing with two. If it is Witch Stalker Frenzy, we, I mean, any amount of burn off the top, we're probably dead. We can't just play around a Witch Stalker Frenzy that might not be there. So let's get the Massacre Girl down. And potentially draw more here off the block yeah because if it's like another lightning strike four is getting through this turn anyways we survive a play with fire though we survive down to one with a play with fire they pass it back no swings that's huge huge for us dude holy cow a bitter triumph could help us take out godric if they get that into the air like they could be saving a permanent back in hand can we pull this back? Keeping Bitter Triumph open could be good, but I think we're just going to go Roaming Throne for more blockers on the ground. And then if, they, if we end up taking out any blockers, getting two draws off the Massacre Girl could be really good, especially since we really are struggling to see the mana we want, we've been wanting to see, right? Opponent, can I borrow some of that? Can I borrow some of that? <laughs> 
<laughs> this is actually really funny, dude. Demir with four and mono red for five. So I guess at that point, we're both getting a little unlucky, huh? We could swing. We could play the second. So we're just going to keep the uh, bitter triumph open. It's unfortunately, nothing for the turn. We like sitting at four against mono red means we, we're constantly just having to keep everything back as blockers until we can start gaining some life off the vein ripper. If it, if it comes down to it, dude, opponent six mana for mono red. Uh, we should go ahead Clean, while we have the open mana, clean up the Swift Spear, get rid of the Massacre Girl is the only thing we can technically play. But we already have one on the board and it's legendary, so. I don't want to get rid of the Vein Rippers. Ooh, Black Sun's Twilight. I guess we just, like, keep that open. The six mana. Now we got to start swinging, right? All right, I'll give it a shot. Opponent is getting really bad draws too. So, like, we want to see more mana. They definitely don't want to see <laughs> the seventh. <laughs> the seventh land comes down. <laughs> I'm going to keep the Black Sun's Twilight back this time, guys. Not worth the swing. All right, fifth mana. Deadly cover up is available, but not something we want to do right now. All right. Massacre girl, swing for four. If we would have started swinging earlier, I think it would have been too risky. But like right now, just based on how we're set up. Oh, connecting the dots. Well, that would have been terrific for the opponent early on, dude. That would have kept their hand so nice and stocked. Okay. So we do have minus four on the Godric. Do they end up just swinging in the air? Or do they swing on the ground? Do they swing on the ground to get the connecting the dots going? Okay, so connecting the dots goes. So now we'll get a draw on Massacre Girl, right, with the block. Since they have Wither. So X is four. Unfortunately, not bringing anything back with the Black Sun's Twilight, but just being really effective removal here. We're going to draw like four cards, guys. This is a wild turn. <laughs> if we would have done this before combat, we could have stopped the connecting the dots. But then they wouldn't have swung with Scoundrel. And Roaming Throne has Wither right now since it's an assassin. This is really cool, dude. Uh, I, I would easily say we both got unlucky here. Oh, pool. Okay. Okay. Draw two more cards. Anything, anything that gains us life would be good. Roaming Throne number two. More mana. Okay. Celestis. So I suppose it's got to be Vein Ripper. And be scared enough to only swing with one of these? Probably. Vein Ripper blocks in the air. Okay. So we'll swing with Massacre Girl. And I'm still, yeah, I mean, they have so much mana too. If they see something that helps them see more off the top, then technically we could still be in danger. Luckily, we don't have to take any of the pain damage from the underground river too. What a game, dude. They go for the connecting the dots. See the two. Let's see it, opponent. Double burn to the face is what they want here. So the, if they would have waited for their turn, they could have potentially seen a hasty creature on the top. <gasps> Guys, is this it? One to the bottom. I got the good game ready. GG opponent. Let's go, guys. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, buddy. Oh, I forgot to reset the uh, deck tracker before uh playing today oh well well we could see our my test games up there it was a little bit of a different version of the deck that actually performed quite well but i changed up the mana base a little bit and whatnot well anyways that was that was solid man i i don't even know what to say like the fact that we were able to pull that back connecting the dots was beautiful from the opponent there uh they had so much mana i'm surprised they didn't wait for their turn but it looked like they didn't have anything anyways also, swinging with the hasty creature, giving us, like, a whole bunch of draws and life gain, and, like, that 
That would have been super messy, so actually, I agree with what the opponent ended up doing there. Uh, which was doing it at the end of our turn. I'm a little concerned about the mana, but I, I'm pretty sure we don't need 29 land in the build, so we should be fine. <laughs> we should totally be fine. I hope. The underground river is dealing some damage to us, too. Okay, Golgari. Okay, mana off the top. Come on. Come on, guys. 28 land. It's got to feel like 28 eventually. Nothing from the opponent. Keeping open removal, I suppose. That's not land and also not something we can play, so... We are officially one turn behind. Opponent finds their third. Infectious Inquiry. Start that poison ball. Nice. Oh, deadly cover up. Oh no, guys. I mean, we can't, we can't live. Yeah. We can't talk about 29 land, right? All right now, I, maybe it was a mulligan. Maybe we mulligan until we have three in the opener. Um, this will be a Vein Ripper discard, huh? That now, hopefully, they don't have too much to poke at our graveyard with. I know Golgari very well could. Looks like Golgari Toxic, though, so this should be really fun, actually. When this dies, Proliferate? Eh. I'm gonna keep the Bitter Triumph back. Mana! Let's go! We got there, guys. All right, now... <laughs> now we let the opponent do the thing for a couple turns as I want to make sure I just have more mana on the board and we try to catch up with our ramp. So, Celestis. I don't know if I would try the Celestis if the opponent had blue over here, by the way. If, if I was running down into... Like a Make Disappear, I, I think... I'd rather go Virtue, and they'd probably let Virtue through because they don't mind the bat. Okay, Rot Priest. Okay. Right, that's probably a problem. So Roaming Thrones Ward could really come in handy here. Um, With four mana open, I'm going to try to get greedy with this Malicious Eclipse. I'm going to try to get really greedy with it. And we're just going to start with Roaming Throne. Uh, now, Toxic Golgari potentially has ways to have us sacrifice creatures. There it is. That's the card. <laughs> Baraska's Fall. <laughs> so, the Aerobic Throne is actually really risky there, then. Oh, come on. Play more creatures, opponent. Oh, come on. Couple more Rot Priests. <laughs> no. I mean, we definitely want to filter out, though, for sure. We're at five poison right now, going up to six off the rat when it dies. Okay. So, life gain isn't great here. Anything that targets isn't great. Um, Might need more ways to send stuff to the grave. So, march? March and I should keep the land. There's the draw. Okay, virtue. Okay, well, getting greedy with the Eclipse and the Throne happened to be really bad. One, two, three, four, five. Dude, do I have to keep this on top just so we can start doing multiple things on the same turn? I think so. Atrata might run right into the Veraska's Fall, right? So we just got to, um, like, we could go Virtue, Virtue, but then Rot Priest is piling on two more poison, and then proliferate is another poison, so that's eight poison. But it's got to be malicious eclipse, I would say. I was double checking the auto tapper, but it doesn't really matter for what we have in hand. Uh, whisper. Okay, nice, nice. And then they get the proliferate too. Very nice opponent. We're still going up to eight poison. Uh, we, we fell way too far behind here, guys, uh, missing the mana for too many turns, and then getting super greedy. 
Oh, the Exile. Oh, very nice Eclipse. Yeah, I'm not even looking at that card for the Exile, but it really comes in handy, huh? I'll tell you what. Might be better to block the Blightbelly Rat, but if we run into... Let's see, they played two Veraska's Falls so far. Okay. I suppose we still go... We still we still kill the rat. Oh, going up to nine, though. <laughs> These are some tough decisions, dude. Because if we go up to nine, we could die this turn easily. Uh, loving the opponent's deck, man. I really like these toxic builds. It is going to be a third Veraska's Fall, guys. That's it. That's game. No matter what we do here. Unless we could figure out a way to exile that Blightbelly rat. Which we... Which we can't. <laughs> that That's that, man. So we can either take the poison there or take it from the uh, proliferate, so we might as well pay the three life here. Oh, you know what? Even if we were seeing mana on time, I think that poison was going to go really well for them. Good game. And they played around our uh, board wipe beautifully too, like just, just holding the creatures back. Or, or, can I view the battlefield? There we go. Or they didn't have a creature at the time, right? Like, this could have been their only two creatures. So a few things could have kept us around for a couple more turns. I think that was going to start heavily leaning towards the opponent, especially with the triple Veraska's Fall. Happens to be a really good card when we're only successfully playing one creature a turn anyways, you know what I mean? And so the, the second we started missing mana... So some things we have to consider for the build so far is, number one, maybe dropping the mulligan until we have three uh, land in hand. Oh, oh, we go first. Yeah, dude. Yeah, keepable. Four mana in the opener. Now let's hope, now let's hope we don't flood, right? We'll start with the surveil and ditch a land if it's on top because four is totally fine for now. Don't need that swamp. Don't need it. Not yet. Virtue. Heart Stabber. Let's go, buddy. Let's do this. Now we see a Trotta on the top, and we get really happy. Okay. Enchantments could be bad. Do I, do I pop that visitor right now, or do I have a little bit of patience? Like, how? What are the odds that they get that above the minus three, minus three right away? I'll start with the swing. Poke the opponent's face. I want to get the second heart stabber down really bad. But we shouldn't. We we should we should take care of visitor, because what it could be is mana calyx. And and calyx pops off with the visitor, and then Yeah, visitor gets a counter, calyx gets a counter. They could plug both into Calyx, making it a 4-4, four, four, which gets around the Virtue that way. I think it's better just to take care of that while we can. Economy of Transients. Okay. Black Sun's Twilight. There's our fourth, and Economy of Transients is kind of in the same boat. It's pretty easy for them to bring back, though. Um, Probably Heartstabber number two in Virtue. Let's swing in the air. Poke and gain a little bit of life. Be happy about it. Play Heart Stabber. All right. And now we're ready for that throne. Unfortunately, the death triggers on Heart Stabber probably isn't going to do the thing. Yeah, because of all the exile removal in these builds. Feels like they saved that naturalist like they were waiting, you know? Malicious Eclipse. Now, how greedy do I want to get with this Eclipse, huh? Could start with, um... I say, I say greed. Yeah. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Roaming Throne. Assassins. Cool. Hopefully they don't buff that naturalist too high, huh? It's going to be Weaver. Okay. Spirited Companion. Okay. Well... I guess if they have a... Okay, Spirited Companion. Okay. Restocking their hand is great, but overall, we're in a good position here. Uh, as the Malicious Eclipse wipes this board. 
That is disgusting, dude. We want to start with the swing? No, we don't, because we're going to swing with Roaming Throne for the turn. The Field of Ruin. This is gross. This is, this is, this is mean. And we get the uh, draw, too. <laughs> All right, Celestis and Swamp. All right, so we swing for two. See, we could have swung for one in the air or two on the ground. That that was our options. Oh, uh, we got rid of a push and pull and an Atrada. That kind of feels bad, though. We will be able to bring the Atrada back with the Black Sun's Twilight, though. Yeah, our draws weren't terrific. Katilda, well, you gotta go. Too bad the exile wasn't still happening, huh? Yeah, Katilda has to die. Ooh, Aklazotes. Now that is an option. But I think we just go X's 5 on the Black Sun's Twilight. Get rid of Katilda. You gotta cap it at 5 so you can actually bring a card back. Then swing with our assassin. How sick is this dude? My goodness. Triggers twice? <laughs> Oh my. GG opponent. I'll tell you what, man. I'll tell you what. When it goes, it goes. And we had just beautiful removal. We got pretty lucky that they spammed a bunch of creatures on the board. Uh, that minus two, minus two is going to go a very long way, especially when every other game is like Boros. I'm not seeing a lot of Boros right now. They're probably, they're probably chilling at higher ranks. Uh, potentially, right? Just, just, seeing how often they win against me that's what it feels like you know what i mean like they're probably chilling at higher ranks job bring into the opponent buddy you know what else we're seeing a lot of or that i'm seeing a lot of recently I'm seeing jeskai control jeskai with that one dragon that gets hexproof on their turn i mean this can't be a good hand right right i'm keeping it at this point now, I'm just I'm just like paranoid about not seeing the mana that I need to see, and like when we got the mana in hand, Okiba Reckoner Raid, cool. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm Successfully do Undercity sewers. I don't need the land right now. Like, having five already available, plus the ramp on Celestis, and plus, like, potentially drawing more mana as time goes on, too. Vampire's Kiss. Dude. Opponent's doing something fun. Alright, get the Swamp. Get the ramp. Turn four Aklazotes could be cool. We'll keep a Reckoner Raid flips, but it doesn't have haste. It's not as uh, fancy as etching. Still a really cool card, though. I love it. Mono black drain is my guess. All right, so like she ordered on the top end and everything else in here. Maybe like curse of leeches. That would be sick, dude. Rid of a land trading out on their turn. Okay. Glizotes comes down. I mean, it, it's probably just going to die, though, right? And once it dies, it's ramp, but we don't need ramp because now we're seeing a lot of land. Like, now it really feels like 28, but we definitely just need to see more of our top end. Some of those vein rippers would be really good off the top. The reason we got four of them, dude. Rankle's prank, huh? Okay. What else did they do with that prank? Did they do... What did they do? Did they just do the sacrifice? Atrada, okay. Also, we have Restless Reef. We want to do that. We could mill ourselves if we want to find something to revive with the Black Sun's Twilight when it comes time. Because it looks like we're going to have the mana for it. I think we will. I think we will. One, two, three, four. Oh, we won't have enough for Atrada then. So it's probably better to get established here. Keep, like, our two removal open. Most likely the March of the Wretched Sorrow, then. Oh, we could have switched it 
to night too if we wanted to filter, but no, I think just keeping this open is totally fine. Blood letter of Aklazotes. That has four. One, two, three. So none of our stuff hits that on right now. Unless we wanted to use March of the Wretched Sorrow and get rid of the Black Sun's Twilight, which doesn't sound great. They filter out another swamp. Okay. So we could bounce with Soaring City. And we won't have a target for Black Sun's Twilight if that's what we wanted to do. No, it's probably just March. Yeah, it's March for the turn. Depending on what we see, of course. Mana. Ew. So... So X is four and we still don't get to mill ourselves, but we will get the swing in. And two, and we'll still get to keep the soaring city open this way too. Because we'll have three and Atrata is legendary. So see what we see off the top of the opponent's deck here. They, uh, t a tithing blade? Something like that. Okay, Soaring City available. Soaring City could be a big tempo play for us, and we're getting to the point where Temple of the Dead can flip back into Aklazotes. Blood Letter, yep. Freebie Freebooter, cool. Okay, so let's go for the tempo play for the turn. Because nothing's in the grave. Rebooter is going to block that Atrata for sure because they don't want this happening, but then they're going to be taking extra damage from the Reef. Bitter Triumph. Very nice. Okay. So we start with... Well, we could play Bitter Triumph, flip the Temple. I just want to mill myself, dude, because that Black Sun's Twilight has the potential to bring back any creature in our deck with all this mana. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's what we want to try. keep everything we keep bitter triumph open for their turn so we want to mill ourselves because i'm looking for any creatures that we can bring back with black sun's twilight a natrata and a bunch of mana huh not great but maybe if they find removal they let the atrata through guys so we're taking more from them uh, they get a little bit of ramp here. They get the scry. I don't think they need the ramp. And we're probably just going to take the three life on the bitter reunion. Let's see, let's see. Uh, arrogant outlaw enters the battlefield. If an opponent lost life this turn, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Well, unfortunately, when we flip it, it doesn't count as an ETB. So we can successfully just keep everything open. In other words, that would be pretty cool. I'm going to take that action because we could still see a creature that we wouldn't mind. Even Heartstabber. All right, that's the, that's the discard still, unfortunately, even though it is a cool creature to see. So the opponent's playing Mono Black Drain, as far as I can tell. Or Mono Black Life Loss. Hopeless Nightmare. Nice. So... Before, this is pay three life. This is lose life. So paying does paying life count? I guess what I guess we'll find out. Let's see if we take six. We do take six. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, now we know. <laughs> I haven't seen the interaction between bitter triumph uh, and the acclizotes before, but at least now we're only taking two from the nightmare, and we're set up pretty well, guys. Guys, what have I done? We were going to discard from the Hopeless Nightmare anyways. Oh, no. I should have discarded instead of taking the six. But hey, it, it, it was still kind of cool to see that uh, interaction happen, I guess. We're set up really nicely, too. The opponent has to have some really good top decks. Uh, taking the action, now we just decline. Uh, Malicious Eclipse. Okay. So we can... Bring back the Aklazotes. We got the swing. We have the flip on I mean, both of those if we wanted. How much does this take away? One, two, three. We won't have enough to power up the land, but that's fine. 
Do we start with the swing for five? Yeah, even though we lost a good chunk of life there. That's what we got here. Mishra's Foundry. Cool. All right, flip you. Yeah, the opponent needs something incredible, like a board wipe, maybe? Hmm. Could switch it to night. Yeah, might as well. Get a little bit of life gain and then uh, discard the Eclipse, see if we see something better here, right? GG opponent. GG, buddy. Yeah, I mean, we were, we were kind of stacked, huh? Like, even after taking all that uh, extra damage. Total deck win rate, 75% so far, guys. Now, four of those games were just test games. Me just seeing if the build was worthwhile. <laughs> and we got, like, three wins in a row in the test games. And I did change the deck a little bit before sitting down and playing with you guys today. So we got four more matches in, and three of them were victories. And I kind of want to go one more, huh? We're, like, 35 minutes in, so, like, we're pushing it. But... It's been pretty fun, huh? A little bit out of my comfort zone. This is more removal than I've ever played with ever. <laughs> nah, that's probably not true, but... Especially, like, I mean, if you count, like, burn decks, then that's a different story, right? Because burn just doubles as removal, but... Okay, opponent goes first. I really want to see our top end do a thing. Like, more, or see, see it do a thing more, right? Like, have we... Yeah, I don't know. I just I kind of just want to showcase more of the deck, you know what I mean? Let's give this a shot. I don't think this would be a worthwhile mulligan by any means. Oh, mirror match? Maybe. Surveil, see what we see. Black Sun's Twilight. Yeah, I, I'm looking... I'm searching for something cool, I guess. Otherworldly Gaze. It is, in fact, not a mirror match, but the Surveil 3. This might be like Salt Eye. It is. It's, uh, it's Salt Eye Squirming Emergence. Okay. That's scary. Luckily, they didn't stock their grave too much yet. A Squirming Emergence. I mean, some, by some miracle, we have to go fast now. Bitter Triumph can take out whatever they end up reanimating. They don't have too much in the grave yet, so... Let's see it, opponent. Yeah, win or lose, though, I'm still pretty satisfied with how the deck has played out overall. Just kind of wanted it to do more cool, flashy things, you know what I mean? The worldly gaze back. Okay, let's see what they see here. Yeah, this is a particularly slow start, but like if we were up against aggro, we would have had a couple turns of removal too, so that's not terrible to think about. Mm, running right into a counter spell, I think I'd rather Throne get countered. That's a tough decision though. Uh, but also if it's not a counter spell, Throne's harder to remove with spot removal. Beautiful. It lands, no worries. One with the multiverse chilling in the grave, by the way. Yeah, having Throne survive here, if we would have just played Massacre Girl, it could have easily been go for the throat. And now if it's go for the throat, like Throne's an artifact too, so it has to be fancy pants removal. Hey, there's their green source. Okay, five open, huh? Well, Reef is fine for the turn. Start with a swing. Okay. Not 100% certain that this throne survives the turn. <laughs> um, Like, Terra Sunder hits artifacts, and then they could pay the extra two. Gets through. Not terrible. Play the Reef and hope that Massacre Girl doesn't get countered. As I suppose, if they didn't counter throne, they could have top decked a counter. See if it's that go for the throat chilling. It's gonna be Mirex. Guys, we got a board. Okay. So with the cut down, they they were missing removal, guys. Okay, like sometimes 
you just get lucky and you're like, what just happened? I don't know what this feeling is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we brought the deck win rate up to a 77%, five matches on video, four matches, a little bit of a different version of the deck. I just forgot to reset the deck tracker, but hey, it wasn't that different of a version. I'm going to count that towards the win rate anyways, you know what I mean? <laughs> Demir Assassins. All right, dude. This was doing a thing. Wait, hold up. I lost it. Okay. <laughs> Assassin revisit. I was looking for the word Demir. Okay. Here's the deck list again, guys. I would have loved to see it do more flashy things. Like how many times did we see Vein Ripper today? We didn't, did we? Did we? Guys, send help. This is what happens when I play test games too, because like I get confused with what was recorded and what isn't. I get asked sometimes like, why don't I record test games? And that's because like sometimes I... Like, I go in knowing that I'm going to change something. I just don't know what I'm changing. And so, like, I would have done the whole intro with, like, a different version of the deck. And then what if I end up not liking the deck at all after the test games? And so, like, that's a uh, a lot of extra effort. You know what I mean? Uh, anyways, oh, there's my little... There's my little rant about not recording test matches. <laughs> um, right, so, Vein Ripper, that... That ability with the throne, dude, first of all, just the abilities in general with the throne, the way like the heart stabber paired with the malicious eclipse and the throne and the extra card draw and oh my goodness, man, the synergies were sick. Do we want three thrones? Four thrones? No, probably not. Uh, just because like everything else in the deck creates a nice little balance, uh, a balance of survival, right? I really love the Massacre Girl. This is such a sick one. Now, unfortunately, this with Atrada, both of them having huge target on its back. You got to just expect them to die no matter what. Uh, luckily, though, up against certain aggro builds, they do struggle sometimes to actually hit for toughness. So up against like Mono Red, for example, it can be pretty tough. If you are playing Mono Red, I always highly recommend Witch Stalker Frenzy. Um, of course, if it's Mono Red and you're actually attacking with creatures right not, not like mono red burn or something uh either way just like anything that deals five damage that's pretty important uh, so just like the toughness on these happens to be pretty good I, I just like love heart stabber we played this in a few different i think we played this in the last assassin deck and we played this in a few different bird decks too every time i play with uh heart stabber it's just good value like it, it's two mana one one flyer okay that's not that great but hey when it dies it replaces itself uh, in the right build, it stocks up your graveyard exactly what you want it to be doing for itself anyways to get that extra plus two, plus two. Just really like Heartstabber. And then also having that flying works beautiful with the Atrada because you can go turn two Heartstabber, turn three Atrada, swing in the air, get a two-two. Yeah, awesome. Malicious Eclipse as a two of. Totally works. I would have loved to drop this on Boros today though, but we didn't need to drop it on Boros. That board wipe against Selesnia enchantments was so good oh my goodness so the push and pull guys the explosiveness of pool first of all push is like more removal if you need it it is sorcery speed definitely noteworthy destroy target tapped creature so the opponent has already swung in with the creature and you decide to drop the push i think more often than not though if you're not on the run from the opponent you're gonna save it for the pool and try to get a couple vein rippers in your grave and we've actually been seeing that and i think Grixis is what's running pool right now. Uh, I think there's some like Grixis vampire decks floating about, which is really cool. Just having like top end Lord Xander and the Vein Ripper and just, just bringing these huge chunky vampires that do something when they're sacrificed too, like pool sacrificing them. Yeah, man. I think this is still going to be worthwhile for sure. And all four Vein Rippers, same concept. The Deadly Cover Up. And some of those matches, we were just, some of those matches we were struggling for, actually, it was the only loss today, right? The only loss on the recording was the match where we just weren't seeing the mana. So we were struggling to get to the five for the deadly cover-up. I do wonder if it would be worthwhile ditching the deadly cover-up for the third malicious eclipse. I'm going to say that depends on what you're seeing. If you find that Malicious Eclipse is as successful for you as it was for me today, then I think that would be worthwhile. 
going up to three of them, right? I don't think you would mind that too much. It's actually like a lot of moments too. Since it's minus two, minus two, you might be drawing off of the Massacre Girl too. And the only like creature that it hits in here is actually the Heart Stabber, which we don't mind dying anyways because it replaces itself. Or drawing two cards if you had to throw them on the board too, which isn't dying to the Malicious Eclipse. And at that point, Point, man uh, oh uh the two twos that are cloaked from atrada also die from the malicious eclipse but i don't think that's something you want to be too concerned about i think all four virtues was pretty good too but i could see dropping down to three and going up another piece of uh successful removal that's successful for what you're seeing is what i'm getting at there right or more utility removal could be good too like shieldred's edict right having that ability to sacrifice or also hit planeswalkers that could really come in handy bitter triumph does hit planeswalkers too i'm just saying like sometimes there's going to be a creature that you can't hit because of uh ward at the moment or something like that there's not too many hexproof creatures but you guys definitely know what i mean like i could see dropping to three virtues going up like a shield edict without any issues that's that though guys i think i'd keep everything else the same i think the double field of ruins is totally fine and actually helped us out in that one game, right? Because we were able to mana fix the swamp and get rid of their Mishra's. Uh, and that Mishra's foundry could have been really good for them. The one Celestis, totally keep it, man. It's going to be great. That extra ramp really does go the extra mile. Do we want two of them? Probably not. I think it's totally fine as a one of. And the same concept with the Aklazotes. The fact that we had the Aklazotes and we started fizzling out in that one game to the point where we could easily flip this back really just showcases that it doesn't have to be in a discard build. It can just it can just exist as a good five mana creature that can help you gain life back and reestablish a board state. And there's going to be moments too where if you had the Aklazotes with the Vein Ripper on the board, oh man, yeah, imagine dropping the pool and you miss the double Vein Ripper, but you bring back Vein Ripper and the Aklazotes and then they sacrifice themselves. Aklazotes just goes into your mana base instead of back into the grave. <laughs> that's just really sick man and then also you get the swing since it gets the haste as well yeah there was a lot of the deck that we didn't get to showcase today a lot of little synergies and overall i think it's actually pretty good let me know in the comments for sure uh, what would you add or take out i'm gonna keep it the same i really like this version of the list so um guys down in the description we have that discord link as well as that patreon link if you're interested in supporting the channel that way Outside of that, th yeah, thank you so much for being here for real. Y'all are champions for making it to the end of the video, and I will see you in the next one.